in the previous lecture, we talked about uh, finding extrema points. Extrema means maximum or minimum. And we also talked about second derivative test for finding or for determining the critical points to be maximum, minimum, or subtle points. Here, we say uh, the <coughs> second derivative test, in the second derivative test, we use this formula. We use this formula, or we use this determinant, this Jacobian, it's actually Jacobian. Here, we say G of AB equals F sub X, X at the point times F sub Y, Y at the point minus F sub X, Y at the point square. Here, we say F, F sub X, Y equals F sub Y, X, we just write down one of them, square. Because here we have F sub X, X times F sub Y, Y minus F sub Y, X times F sub X, Y. If these two are equal, we just square one of them, it's enough. When these two are equal, we say if the function is continuous. If the function is continuous, f sub x, y equals f sub y, x. And here, we use this formula for <clears throat> determining the critical points, for test the critical points. Here, a, b, a, b is a critical point. We say for each critical point, we use this formula. And we say, if g of a, b is greater than zero, that means here, a, b is the critical point. If g of a, b is greater than zero, and f sub x, x is less than zero, then we say the point is local maximum. So here we just focus on g of a, b and f sub x, x at a, b. g of a, b is this formula, or you can use the above one. We say if both if g of a b is greater than zero, but f of f sub x x is less than zero at the point a b, we say f of a b is a local maximum, and we say f of a b is local minimum when f g of a b is greater than zero and f sub x x is greater than zero. That means here if both are greater than zero, we say uh, f of a b. I, I mean f of the critical point is local minimum. And for subtle point, we say <clears throat> g of a, b, if it is less than zero, if g of a, b is less than zero, we say the critical point is a subtle point. And we say, it's no, we have no conclusion if g of a, b is zero. If g of a, b, is zero, then it means the critical point is neither, neither the above points. Okay? Neither maximum, no minimum, no subtle points. Here we have some examples. For these two examples, we should find the critical points and then we determine the name of those points. Yeah? First, we find the critical points. We said, we are going to find the critical points by finding f sub x and f sub y. We equal them both to, to zero, then we find the values of x and y. The values of x, y uh, are the critical points. Here, first let's find the critical points. For the first one, for i, we say we should find f sub x first, f sub x equals. What's f sub x for f of x, y to be 2y cubed minus 6xy minus y minus x squared? What's f sub x means finding the partial derivative of the function with respect to x? It equals to, this term is zero. This term is zero. Yeah, we, in this term, we have no x. That means it's derivative is zero with respect to x. For this one, the derivative of this function, of this theorem with respect to x is minus 6y. Then derivative of this theorem with respect to x is minus 2x. This is f sub x. And you have f sub y. We should find f sub y of x, y. Equals to what? Yeah. 
Yes, we took it with respect to x. The derivative of x is one, and what's left? Only negative six y. Here we have minus six y x. Look, the data show how much you can. But it's with x. I'm not understand that. Data show x you can. Yeah. Cut a cut. She knocks just one. And here, the derivative of the theorem with respect to x is zero because here you have no x. And now we are going to find the derivatives, the partial derivative of the function with respect to y. For the first term, here, what we get, the derivative of this term with respect to y is 6, 6y squared minus. And here you have minus 6xy derivative of this, of this term with respect to y is minus 6x. And derivative of the last term, as we have no y in it, its derivative is zero. So now we say that uh, these are f sub x and f sub y. As I said, we should first find the critical points. How to get the critical points? We, we are gonna find the partial derivative with respect to x and also partial derivative with respect to y. This with respect to x and we equal both to zero. We equal both to zero. Now we have these two equations. We have these two equations, minus six y minus two x equals zero. And also uh, six, six y squared minus six x equals zero. You can solve this linear system. It's a, so it's not a linear, it's a nonlinear system. You can use it by either elimination or substitution. Okay. From the first one, from the first one, what's the value of y? Or what's the value of x? Here, you say minus 6y equals 2x. So what's x? x is minus 3y. Here, put in equation 2, this equation 2. We are going to replace x by minus 3y. You can also use elimination by multiplying the first equation by negative 3, then that will be, uh, x will be cancelled out. Okay? If you put minus 3y for x in the second equation, what do you get? You get we get 6y squared minus 6. Here we replace x by minus 3y. We replaced by minus 3y. It equals 0. Now, six minus 6 times minus 3 is plus 18. We get 6y squared minus. It becomes plus 18y equals 0. And then we are going to find the values of y. Yeah, we say we take 6y as the common. What's left? Here we get y plus 3 equals 0. And here we get two different values for y. We see y equals 0 or y equals minus 3. That's it. Here we get two different values for y. y is 0 and y is 3. So what's the value of x when y to be 0? This is x. We say x is minus 3y. It's minus 3 times the value of y. <laughs> so from this, x is minus 3 times 0 is still 0. So the point is 0, 0. This is the critical point. OK? And from this one, we get a value of x. We say x is minus 3y. So here, what we get, minus 3 times minus 3. So x is 9. And the critical point is 9 and minus 3. These two are the critical points. As you see here, what we do, we first find the first derivatives, and we get two equations. We equal them both to, to 0. We get two equations, this equation 1 and this equation 2. OK? We can use substitution or elimination for finding the values of x and y for this nonlinear system. 
From the first equation, we can get the value of x. We can write down x in terms of y. You say x equals minus 3y from the first equation. From equation one, we get that x is minus 3y. And then we put this into the second equation, this substitution. We get 6y squared minus 6 times minus 3y equals 0. And we get 6y squared plus 18y equals 0. In this equation, we have only y. It's a polynomial of degree 2. We can solve it by factorizing it. We can take common. 6y is common. So we get y plus 3. If we take 6y as the common, we get y plus 3. Then we are going to find the values of y. y from here, from here, is 0. And y from here is minus 3. We get y is 0 and y is negative 3. So what, what is the value of x when y is 0? We use this function that you found. We use this. We say x is minus 3y. It's minus 3y. That means we multiply the value of y by negative 3 to get the value of x. Here, if y to be 0, x is 0 also, because negative 3 times 0 is still 0. And get 0, 0 is the critical point. And the other critical point is 9 and negative 3. How? Since y is negative 3, and we say x is minus 3y. So we replace each y here by negative 3. And we get minus 3 times minus 3, which is 9. So the critical point is 9 and negative 3. And you can write down here the critical points. Are zero zero and nine and negative three. Here we have two critical points. For each of the critical points, we should find G. We should find G here. We should find G for each of the critical points. So what do we need to find in G? We should we should have f sub x, y, f sub y, x, f sub x, x, f sub y, y. We must have these four partial derivatives, okay? And here, let's find these four partial derivatives for function f. Here we found f sub x and f sub y. So what's f sub x, x? Here we have, let's uh, first write down f sub x equals minus 6y minus 2x. And from f sub x, we can get f sub x, x, and f sub x, y. What's f sub x, x? We take another uh, partial derivative with respect to x for this function with respect to x. So what's it? What's the derivative of this function with respect to x? Hmm? The first term is zero, and the second is minus two. Well, how about f sub x, y? It's minus six. Here we have f sub x, x and f sub y. And then from f sub y of x, y, as this six uh, y squared minus six x. Here, f sub y, y equals to what? We take another partial derivative for this function with respect to y. And you get 12y. F sub x, x, sorry, f sub y, x equals to what? What's f sub y, x here? It's minus six. These are the partial derivatives. Now, we are gonna find the partial derivatives at the first critical point for this one. That means we replace x by zero and y by zero at each partial derivative. And then we are going to find G, okay? Here, we say for 0, 0, we say for 0, 0, F sub X, we don't need to find F sub X. F sub X, X is minus 2. We say F sub X, X is minus 2. 
f sub y y is minus six. How about f sub x y? So f sub y y is minus twelve. F sub x y is minus six. F sub y y equals twelve y. So how about f sub y y at zero zero? This is zero, is it? Here we get zero. Why? Because in f sub y y we replace x by zero and y by zero. We have no x, but we have y. We replace y by zero and we get twelve times zero is zero. It's f sub y y. And f sub y x equals minus six. Look, f sub y x equals to f sub x y. Since we have a polynomial and polynomial as polynomials are continuous at all. How to find G? Then let's find G. We say G of a b equals f sub x x at a b times f sub y y at a b minus f sub x y at a b squared. What's f sub x x? f sub x x is minus two. So g at zero zero equals minus two times f sub y y at zero zero is zero then minus f sub x y this f sub x y which is the same as f sub y x it's minus six squared so the result g of zero zero equals minus 36 is it that's minus 36. And in the conditions here we have, we said that if G is less than zero, if G is less than zero, we say that critical point is saddle point. So here. Yeah. The critical point. The critical point zero zero is a saddle point. That's for zero zero. How about for nine and negative three? How about this one? We are gonna do the same for that. We are gonna find the partial derivatives and then we replace. Here we have partial derivatives. We just replace x by nine and y by negative three in the second partial derivatives, then we find g for the second one. You see, for nine and negative three. f sub x, x is minus two, it's, it's a constant. f sub x, y is, sorry, f sub x, y is minus six. f sub y, y is, 12 of y. And here we replace y by negative three because we are gonna find the partial the second partial derivatives at nine and negative three. So from this we say f sub y y at nine and negative three equals minus 36. Is it? It's minus 36. That's right. It's correct. Here we have 12 times minus three, which is minus 36. And so we say G at zero, zero equals F sub X, X at zero, zero times F sub Y, Y at zero, zero minus F sub, F sub X, Y at zero, zero squared. What's F sub zero, F sub X, X, it's minus two times f sub y y is minus 36, then minus. What's f sub x y is minus six squared. 
and you get uh, 72 minus 36, 36. This is greater than zero. This is greater than zero. And then we check f sub xx. F is either greater than or less than zero. As you see here, we decide uh, a critical point to be maximum or minimum by both g and f sub xx. We say if g is greater than zero, then it's either maximum or minimum. How do you know that's maximum or minimum? We look at f sub xx at the point. If f sub xx at the point is less than zero, we say that's maximum. And if f sub xx is greater than zero, we say that's minimum. That means here we have g, g is greater than zero. That means g of zero, zero is greater than zero. How about f sub xx? As zero, zero. What's the function f sub xx? It's minus two. It's always negative, is it? It's minus two. That means it's minus two, it's less than zero. We said if g is greater than zero and f sub x is xx is less than zero, means the critical point is at maximum. So the critical point nine and three and negative three. Is maximum. It's local maximum actually. Why? Because G at the so it's not zero zero. It's nine and three. I'm sorry for that. These or points should be nine and three. Since here we work on nine and three. That's it, okay. Nine and negative three. Nine and negative three. Nine and negative three. Nine and negative three. That's all, okay? So here, the critical point is maximum. Why? Because G at the point is greater than zero, and F sub XX at the point is less than zero. That's why it's maximum. For the second example, in the second example, we have f, f of xy, which is x squared minus y squared plus 2x plus 6y minus 4. Here, we should find the partial derivatives, press f sub x and f sub y, and we equal them both to zero to get the critical points. After finding the critical points, we test the critical point in G. If it is greater than zero, then we look at F sub xx. If F sub xx is greater than zero, then it's minimum. If it is less than zero, we say the critical point is maximum. But if G is less than zero, we say that's a subtle point. X squared minus Y squared. So for double I, f of x, y equals x squared minus y squared plus two x plus six y minus four. Here, to find the max critical points and then determining the critical, the type of critical points, Type of, in type of critical points we have only maximum, minimum, or subtle points, okay? Here, we say to find the critical points first, what we do, we first find f sub x. f sub x is 2xy squared plus 2. That's all. It's 2xy squared plus 2. And f sub y equals minus two. Sorry, I thought that's multiplication. It's not. It's, it's difference. Here we get two x plus two. That's all. And for finding f sub y, we get minus two y plus six. We equal both to zero. From this one, we can get that x is minus one. 
And from this one, we get that y is three. Is it? In both, from uh, both equations, from f sub x, we, we get only one variable in the equation. When you equal to zero, we can find its value. And in f sub y, we also get only one variable in the equation. We get only one value for y. That means these two values of y, so the critical points, is negative one and three. Here you have only one value for x and one value for y. So you have only one critical point. How to determine the type of this critical point? What should we find? We should find G. We say G at the critical point, minus one and three equals F sub X, X at the point, minus one and three times f sub y y at the point which is minus one and three minus f sub x y at the point which is minus one and three all squared that's g okay in g we must uh, we have f sub x x f sub y y and f sub x y so you must find these second partial derivatives at the critical point these are the first derivatives. From f sub x, we can get f sub x, x, and f sub x, y. So f sub x, x equals to what? This is f sub x. What's f sub x, x? It's only two. How about f sub x, y? In function f, we have no y. That means its derivative is zero with respect to y. And f sub y, y, we can find this from f sub y. f sub y is minus two y plus six. Partial derivative of this function with respect to y, we get only minus two. We replace these by the values in the function g. So you get g of minus one and three equals, what's f sub x, x at the point? f is constant, so you don't need to replace x and y by the values because it's so constant. But if there is any variable here, we must replace by its value. Which value? <clears throat> the value from critical point. Here we have minus one and three. In each of these, if you have x, we replace by negative one. And if you have uh, y, in each of these, we replace it by three. So g of negative one and three equals f sub x, x, which is two, times f sub y, y, minus two minus f sub x y squared which is zero squared okay that equals minus four this is less than zero since g is less than zero so you don't need to test f sub x x we just say that's a subtle point because g is less than zero so you say the critical point is a saddle point. So what if this is greater than zero? Then we test f sub x x. If f sub x x is greater than zero, we say that's minimum. If it's less than zero, we say that's maximum. Just follow these three cases. These three cases. Okay? That's it. So here, it's how to find local maximum and local minimum, and also subtle point for a function of multivariable, of a multivariable function. Now we have absolute extrema. Let me show you a graph here. Look, in this graph, what we have? Here you have these points, one and two. We have these two points which are maximum. Both are local maxima, both, because this is bigger than all of its neighbors. And this is also bigger than all of its neighbors. So these two are both local maxima. So which, which of these is the absolute maxima? We say for absolute maximum, it must be greater than all of the uh, points in the domain. That means what, what's the highest point in this graph? This point is the highest graph, is the highest point in the graph. 
That means, look, it's bigger than O. So that point is called absolute maximum. That point is called absolute maximum. And for the minimums, the same. Here, this is local minimum because it is bigger than all of its uh, neighbors. And it's also local minimum. But at the same time, it's absolute minimum also. It's absolute minimum also because it's the lowest point in the graph. It's the lowest point in the graph. For example, in R2, If in R2, we have, let's say this graph. What's the local minimum here? These are local minimum. So which of these is absolute minimum? The lowest one, this one. This one is the uh, local minimum. And for local maxima, uh, we have Which one, here we have three local max, local maximum. But which one is the absolute maximum? This one, the highest one. The highest one is the local maximum. So here, the absolute maximum, sorry. So the highest one in the graph is called absolute maximum. And for the lowest one, it's called absolute minimum. That's the difference between local and absolute minimum and maximum. Here, to find the absolute extrema of a function on a closed and bounded region. If we have, let's say, a rectangle. A rectangle. If we have this graph, this rectangle. And the graph here to be like that. Look, we say to find the local max, so the absolute maximum and absolute minimum for this graph in this bounded area, this is the area here, this is the area. The graph is in that bounded area. To find the absolute maximum and absolute minimum for this function and in the graph is the function of f of x. To find the absolute maximum and absolute minimum for this function in this bounded area, we say we follow these steps. First, we should find the critical points of the function. How? By taking derivatives and equaling to zero, then finding values of x and y. Then we compute the values of f at the critical points. That means replace the critical points into the function, into the original function. That's in the first step. In the second step, find extreme values of f on the boundary. Here, we have this boundary. At this line, we are gonna find the greatest and lowest value of f of x at this line. And at this line also, at this line also, at this line also. So here, we are gonna find f, I mean the maximum value of f and minimum value of f at each of the boundaries. Okay, it's step two. Now we compare the points that you get here. The least one, the least one is the absolute minimum. And the greatest one is the absolute maximum. Here, there is no example about that. Uh, I'm gonna solve an example and record it, and then post for you, okay? There's no examples here in the lecture notes. I'm gonna solve an example completely, then I'll post it to you, okay? So this is the end of this chapter. We now have an example about finding the absolute maximum and minimum values of a function in a closed bounded region. Here, this is the region. It says find the, in this example, uh, it says 
find the absolute maximum and absolute minimum values for the function f of x, where f of x to be x squared minus 2xy plus 2y. On this rectangle, d is the region which, which is given. So on this rectangle, we are going to find the absolute maximum and absolute minimum for the function. Now, uh, you see, since the function is uh, a polynomial, so it's continuous at all. It's uh, continuous at all uh, points on the region. The region is D. Yeah. Uh, D is X from 0 to 3, Y from 0 to 2. As you see in D, X is from 0 to 3, and Y is from 0 to 2. This, this is the region. This is our region. That's it. So now we should first find, look, before we, we do it, I'm going to return to the steps of finding the extreme extrema of a function on a closed bound region. We follow these three steps. In, in step one, we are going to find the critical points for the function Okay, in the region. Then we compute the values of f of f at the critical points. That means after finding the critical points, we are going to substitute the critical points into the function. That's in step one. Then we get some values. In step two, uh, we are going to find the extremum values of f on the boundary here. Uh, that means as you have a rectangle, it's something like some shape like this. We are going to find the extreme value, extreme values. That means ma maximum and minimum at each line, at each side of the rectangle as it's bounded. So the boundary here, we have these four sides. That means we are going to find the, <clears throat> the maximum and minimum at each of these four sides of the rectangle. And then after finding these, we are gonna compare the points that you get here, the values that you get in steps one and two. We say the, the greatest one is the ma absolute maximum. And the least one is the absolute minimum of the function on the region. That's all. That's in step, in, in step three. We just do that. We just compare the points. Let's return to the example. We have given this example. In the example, as uh, it's written above, we should first find in step one, finding the critical points. We say we can get the critical points as we did in the previous examples. Uh, we are going to find f sub x and f sub y. And we equal each to zero. We equal e to zero. These are f sub x and f sub y. This is f of x, y. You are going to find f sub x and f sub y for the function of x, y uh, <clears throat> with respect to x and y. At the end, we equal e to zero. Here, we can, uh, we can get the values of x and y, and we get that uh, x is one and y is one. In both, both is one. That means here we get only one value for X and one value for Y, okay? And now we say the critical point is one, one because X is one and Y is one. You can solve this by yourself. It's easy to solve it. Here from this equation, we can get that X is one and replacing it to the other equation. We get that Y is one also. So here, X is one and Y is one. That means our critical point is one, one. Now we are gonna find, or we are gonna evaluate the critical point into, into the function. That means we are gonna find F of one, one. Here we replace X by one and Y by one in the given equation, the original one. So it is one. If we replace X by one and Y by one here, what we get, we get one. If we replace x by one and y by one here, we get one. That means f of one, one is one. Here, we have only one critical point and it's va the, fun the value of the function at the critical point is one. That's step one. And then for step two, 
it's it's better to uh, graph the rectangle. We have, look, I'm gonna draw it again. X is from zero to three. As it's given, X is from zero to three. In D, it's given that X is from zero to three. That means let's say it's three. From zero to three, this is X. And Y is from zero to two. Y is from zero to two. So this is two. That means all of these points and all of these points. So if we join these two sides, we get a rectangle. We get in this rectangle, X is from zero to three and Y is from zero to two. This is our rectangle. Now we are gonna find the maximum and minimum values of the function at each of these sides. We name this L1, this is to be L2, this is L3, this is L4. We are gonna find the maximum and minimum values of the function at each of these lines. Here, if X is three and Y is two, so this point is three and two, okay? And this is the origin, which is, which is zero, zero. And this graph is draw there. I'm gonna work on the draw one. Yeah, I'm gonna clean this one. We have the graph here. This is the graph. As I said, we are gonna find the absolute max is the maximum and minimum values for the function at each line or at each side of the rectangle. On L1, on L1, as you see here, y is zero here and here's zero also. That means y equals zero. How about x? x is from zero to three. That means x is between zero and three. So if you replace y by zero in the given function in f of x, y, and this f of x, y, if you replace y by zero, the second two terms, I mean, the second and third term, third terms are gonna be zero because if you replace y by zero, on L1, y is zero, so you fix it. Y is zero. That means the function becomes f of z x zero, as we replaced y by zero, is x squared. This is x squared. So on this line, on L1, on L1, the function is x squared. Since on L on L1, y is zero. That means uh, by changing the value of x from zero to three, how is the function changing? At zero, f of zero, zero is zero. And f of uh, three and zero is nine. That means here, we get the minimum value at zero, zero, and we get the maximum value at three and nine. So here, we say the function, the function <clears throat> has its minimum at zero, zero, and it is zero. So it's min minimum and maximum values is f of three and zero, which is nine. That means on L1, the function has maximum uh, at three and zero, and it has minimum at zero, zero. So this is on L1. And about L2, about L2 on this line, as you see here, X is fixed in both X is three, 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 X is three. So we just replace X by three in the function. If you replace X by three here in this function, if you replace X by three here, what we get, we get this function. And y is the y because y is changing from zero to two. It's changing from zero to two. That's why uh, we are not gonna fix y. We just fix the uh, the x value because x is three in both. That means here y is from zero to two, and x is fixed. Here for this function, if y is changing from zero to two, y is changing from zero to two. By increasing the value of y, the function is decreasing. 
That means if we increase the value of y here, we get minus nine minus four y. By increasing the value of y, the function is decreasing, okay? That means uh, if y, if y to be zero, and if y to be uh, two, let's find f of zero. f of, if y to be zero, that means three and zero, because here, this is f of three and y. If y to be zero, we get f of three and zero, and it's nine. If you replace y by zero in this function, we get nine. f of uh, three and two, how about this one? If you replace y by two here, since we say y is changing from zero to two, that means we get nine minus four times two. Four times two is eight. So nine minus eight is one. That means f of three and two is one. So here we say the maximum, the maximum is nine and the minimum is one. That's it. So here the, uh, the function has maximum at three and zero. And also it has minimum at three and two. That's it. F of three and zero is nine, which is the maximum value. And the minimum value is at three and two, which is one. That's on L2. And then on L3 and on, on L4, we do the same. We do the same for L3 and L4. We do the same. And here we get these values. We get these values. This is for L3 and L4 also. For L4, we get F of 0, 0 is 0, and F of 0 and 2 is 4. This is maximum and this is minimum. And for, on L3, you say this is a maximum and this is minimum. At, the, at these points, has minimum and maximum values. So this is the maximum value, and this is the minimum value on L3. And on L4, this is the maximum value, and this is the minimum value. We now compare these points, okay? What's the maximum one among these all? The maximum one is nine. F of three and zero equals nine. F of three and zero equals nine. At this point, we get the greatest one. Among which of the points? Among the points that you found in step two. I mean, on the lines of, of the sides of the uh, rectangle. And f of zero, zero equals zero. We got that f of zero, zero is the least value that you get, which is zero. And nine is the greatest value that you get on the lines. That means uh, here we get these points. One of them is maximum and one of them is minimum. It's for what? It's for the sides of the rectangle. And here we have f of one, one, which is the critical point, it's one. And now we are gonna find the biggest or the greatest one here. The greatest point here is what? The greatest value of f. The greatest value of f is at three and zero. That means at three and zero, the function is uh, the function has absolute maximum. So the absolute maximum value is nine. This is the absolute maximum value. As, as we said, we are gonna compare the points that you get from step one and step two. Step one, that's the critical points. Step two is the values that you get from the sides of the region, which is a which, uh, rectangle here. We say the greatest one or the absolute maximum is at three and zero and its value is nine. And the absolute minimum is at zero, zero and its value is zero. And also f of two, two is zero, okay? Here, f of three and zero at this point at three and zero, the function has uh, absolute ma absolute maximum and it is value so the value of the absolute maximum 
is 9. And for absolute minimum, the function has absolute minimum at 0, 0, and 2, 2. So its value is 0. So here, the absolute value for the function, for this function, the absolute value for this function at this region is the, uh, the absolute uh, maximum one is 9. And the absolute minimum value is 0. That's an example about finding the absolute maximum and absolute minimum.